This meeting will be conducted by audio or video conference without physically present quorum of the Streamwood Park District Board of Commissioners because of a disaster declaration related to COVID-19 public health concerns affecting the jurisdiction of the Park District. The President of the Board of Commissioners has determined that an in-person meeting at the Hoosier Grove Barn, 700 West Irving Park Road with all participants is not practical or prudent because of the disaster. Commissioners, the executive director, staff, and chief legal counsel will not all be physically present at the Hoosier Grove Barn, 700 West Irving Park Road due to the disaster. Physical public attendance at the Hoosier Grove Barn, 700 West Irving Park Road may be limited or not feasible, so alternative arrangements for public access to hear the meeting are available here. With that being said, I'd like to call the meeting to order at seven o'clock. Roll call, please. Uh, Commissioner Armstrong? Here. <clears throat> Commissioner Brogan? He's there. He's here. He can't unmute. They're working on unmuting him. All right. Commissioner Janik? Here. Commissioner Yower? Here. President Wright? Here. Uh, I wanted this confirmation that we could all hear each other right now. I know that Rick cannot talk, but I want to make sure everyone can hear everybody. Is that all? Everybody can hear each other? Yes. yes. Excellent. Yes. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States of America, United America to the Republic, and to the Republic which it stands, one nation, under God, under indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. Great. Um, do we have any guests that we need to introduce, Mr. Janda? He's muted, Jeff. He's muted. Jeff, you're muted. No, we do not. And I did not receive any phone calls or emails regarding the meeting. So I would take it. We don't have any topics from the floor then. So I entertain a motion for approval in the agenda. I yep. second it. Motion and a second. A roll call, please. Commissioner Armstrong. I think she's on mute. All right, Commissioner Brogan, Commissioner Janik. Aye. Commissioner Yower. Aye. I said I also. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> President Wright. All right. If for some reason, if you're on mute or you can't hear, there is a chat box. Please feel free to correspond on that. Um, we're doing the votes if possible. Great. Uh, next up, we have the finance report. Commissioner Yower. Okay, we have two items. The first one is the monthly expenditures and payroll. We all received copies of it. Any questions or concerns about it? Okay. And the next one is the GO Limited Bond Ordinance 2020-09-01-0. Again, any questions or concerns about it? Okay, that's it uh, for the finance report, uh, President uh, Wright. We need a, we need a motion. What's that? We need a motion. For, for the ordinance. Yes, yeah. I'm sorry. We need a motion for the first. Wait a minute. No, we don't. For GO Limited Bond Ordinance 2020 09-01-0. -O. So moved. It should be covered under new business. Okay, you know, that's what I thought because I saw that there. Okay, we'll move it to new business then. Yeah. Thank you. So don't do not. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Now, next up, we have policy and planning report. Since Commissioner Brogan can't talk at the moment, uh, Commissioner Janet, can you read the policy and planning report, please? I am A. I am A. It's resolution 2020 09 01 R. The retirement of Joe Benanis, who is not present here. 
Joe, as you know, has been with us for a very long time and is retiring um, this week. And uh, uh, Director Janet, you want to kind of give us a flavor of what's going to be going on um, with him this week? You're so good, Jeff. Sorry about that. On Thursday, we'll be holding a coffee and cake from 2 to 4 p.m. at Park Place. Joe's last day will be Friday, but it's a chance for you to come by and say uh, congratulations and wish him a happy retirement. I apologize because I know that I have Zoom calls with clients all that afternoon. I will send Joe a note, but he's been a great, uh, you know, he's done a, a tremendous job for us over at Park Place for a very long time. So if you can make it, please do. And, and please express our gratitude, <laughs> Dr. Janda, for him. Um, should we vote on this one too, I would assume? It'll be on new business. Okay, we'll move forward then. Um, go ahead, Commissioner Janik. I think that, you know, if you guys have tipped, read it and everything, a lot of work has been put on by uh, Ansel Glink. I know we've had some really good discussions about it. I mean, obviously, as we said before, if somebody decides they want to be one of our facilities or sites to do a protest, there's not much we can do about it, but there's an opportunity that we could have something together where people could talk and, and work with us and, and make sure that we have the right type of protections there for the, the protesters. I think that this um, policy is very well written and I just love to get a flavor of what everybody else feels about it. I know that Commissioner Brogan liked it, uh, but I would like to hear from everyone else. Yeah, so I read it. Um, I wasn't at the last meeting, and I know it was a, um, a policy that we were, was it two year, months ago? Two years ago. <laughs> it's been a very long day. Um, I, I, I totally, like, I totally understand it. I totally understand the reason why. I just feel if we have a policy, then it, it fringes upon First Amendment rights, right? Our, our First Amendment right is to congregate and for free speech. So now if we have a policy, then to me, it just feels counter, and maybe that's just my feeling. And um, like, I totally understand why, like we want to have an organization, we want to have a structure in place. But for me to, to say, oh, we need a policy, then I, don't know, I feel like that kind of puts a boundary on First Amendment right. You can have your First Amendment rights within this boundary, and I just don't feel like that's the intent of that. I think oh. the way I, and I, I see where you're coming from, Adriana, where I'm, I know I'm looking at it is this, especially in light of all different groups that, that could do this. I don't think we could actually ever prevent anybody from assembling their First Amendment rights anywhere. I think a couple of reasons why if we had something in there, if they were to kind of put together an opportunity then for the partner with us to put something together, especially if we could provide police protection and protection from the neighborhoods because it's, it's uh, I mean, one group might be, you know, I mean, for instance, there's nothing that could, you can really prevent us from if the Illinois Nazis wanted to have congregate and have a protest as well. And I think what we're trying to do is have, and Jeff could jump in anytime, but try to put together something that enables us to guide people into an area if all possible so that they have the proper security and, and to work with us so that make sure that it goes out without a hitch. And, and I, again, and it's been brought up before and we have, you know, Jeff has been law enforcement, Rick's been in law enforcement, you know, Rich has been in law enforcement. I don't think we could ever prevent it from happening, but if we at least have something in, in play here that we're, if they're talking to us, we at least put it in a position where there's better security and, and a better chance to, you know, take some of the trouble element out of it. Am I, Jeff, what is your, what are your thoughts? Um. I want to say that I agree with President Wright, especially in light of the fact that most of the uh, very peaceful protests, uh, you know, the, the protesting that's going on, they've all turned violent and, and, you know, out of control. 
So if we have something in place and we make sure that the police is there, I think we are adding some protection to the district. And I'm all for it. I'm for it. I read it and I think it's good. I think we're adding the protection for protesters as well. I mean, I think that, you know, the thing in Streamwood, the, the protesters were, were phenomenal. I mean, they, they cleaned up after themselves. They did everything right. They worked with Jeff. They worked with the police. They worked with the village. And I think, you know, if anything, it's kind of fostering an opportunity to, in the future, and I think that they've reached out to us and they've known that they had a good working relationship with Jeff, they had a good working relationship with the police department, and that things went well. I mean, we can't ever control everything, but if we have an opportunity that they could reach out to us and, and we can you know, work together and doing something that takes as much potential problems out of it, I, I think that's good. Now, I, I just don't think that if one group decides one day they're going to show up, whatever facility or anywhere in town, we, we really can't prevent it. But if we had the policy where they work with us, we might be at least able to guide in an area where we could provide security for the protesters, for the residents, and for the neighboring properties. Am I, Jeff, is that kind of how, am I misinterpreting that or is that how that was? Oh, you, you are correct. It provides more of a guidance for everybody involved of these that you can peacefully protest, peacefully assemble, Conduct the business you want to conduct. I mean, we're not voting on it tonight. I mean, there's still, you know, there's other people, other concerns things you can share with uh, Director Janda and and others. But I, I think that I think this is a very sound resolution. We vote on it, but again, nothing's going to be a hundred percent. You never want to take anybody's First Amendment's rights away. But at the same time, you have an opportunity to have them assemble in an area that could be advantageous to make sure that there's less potential of a, of a, of a problem. I, I think that's kind of the guide that we have right there. My interpretation, other, other people might differ. Hey, Bill. Yes. I have uh, Commissioner Brogan. He's gonna speak through my phone. Okay. And just his thoughts. Go ahead, Rick. Well, this is just guidelines. There's nothing even the even, First Amendment rights are First Amendment rights. So these are just guidelines for assembling and being able to have uh, some grasp on what could happen at any one of our locations. And it's not even anything that we could do. We can't like fine you or take you to court. So it's a guideline that if the village said, well, what's, what's your, what, what guidelines do you have? And you, I don't have any. Oh, then they can do whatever they want. So, so there's, it's, it's like um, people come into our splash pad and they don't even, you know, they bring up a giant bus and a bunch of kids. We don't have guidelines for that. They can come, it's an open park, but that's different than I want to assemble and have you know, people come there and have and need to maybe get the power and maybe need to get to, uh, you know, bathrooms and could there be a safety issue for the people that are coming and the people that may want to disrupt this? That's a big difference than someone just showing up because they want to play on a splash pad. So I totally support this and it's, they have this in several park districts and a lot of park districts. So. I don't see what the harm is. There's not going to be anything that's being taken away. Okay. Um, I just want to point, we've been talking about it in three meetings, and today we are supposed to vote for it. You know, I think we're not. looking at October to, to pass it right now. I, I think what we're done, uh, Director Janda took instructions to go back to Ansel Blink and, and share uh, comments and concerns from both our um, August and meetings and, and I think that's what he's done and, and I think that you know this is the, the kind of the last bit of discussion and an opportunity and even if it's you know there's other thoughts after the meeting that could be shared with director Janda and you know we, we but I, I think we're gonna be looking at voting on it in October am I correct Jeff? Correct. Correct.
Hey, Rihanna, do you have a question? Because your box, your box went yellow. <laughs> my, oh, Matt's closing the blinds. <laughs> I'm losing light in here. <laughs> no problem. So, anyway, just so you know, this is there's still time to have discussion. Please share your thoughts. You know, the good, the bad, the ugly. You know, with with uh, Director Janda, because we're we are looking at voting on it in the October. Is there anything else, Director Janda? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Back to you, Commissioner Janet. Does that conclude the policy and planning report, I would assume? Mm -hmm. Okay. Next up, we have the consent agenda. I entertain a motion for approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Do we have a second? Second? Anybody? I'll second it. Okay, thank you, Adrian. I believe it was moved by Janik, second by Yawa. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Armstrong? Aye. Commissioner Brogan? Aye. 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 <laughs> Commissioner Janik? He's an aye. I jumped. Skip. Commissioner Yower? Aye. Wasn't it right? Aye. Next up, we have correspondence. Anybody have any correspondence they wish to share? None. We move to departments and directors report. Director Janda, floor is yours. Thank you. Elizabeth, can you put the swing on, please? Okay. One second here. Okay, phase four for COVID, no current changes in the Illinois Department of Public Health guidance. Our positivity rate is 6.1 is the last reporting period. We have purchased five handheld foggers and one wheeled unit for sanita sanitization efforts, not sensitization efforts. We've also applied and have been approved for FEMA aid. So we'll be able to request partial reimbursement so far, we have over $8,000 in costs related to materials. We do have one staff member and one contractor that are off pending results of a COVID test. Recreation, outdoor movie with the library on August 28th was a huge success. We had 15 cars and about 60 people in attendance. Hocus Pocus is the next movie on October 2nd. There are currently 43 cars registered. We have a maximum of 45 for safe distancing. See a truck was held August 22nd at Park Place. It was very well attended. Trunk or treat is scheduled for October 29th at Park Place. We have 94 people currently registered. Obviously social distancing will be uh, limiting the number. We have a pumpkin decorating contest to be held this month. Also Halloween and home decorating contest this month. Regarding fitness, we're down a little bit on our averages. We're down to 85.6 per day and weekends is 40.5 per day. Pool usage requests are stable. On the U46 collaborative, <coughs> excuse me, there have not been any registrations to date. Staff have been in contact with our local school principals to help them, to ask them to help us push the information out to student families. Preschool began today with 25 students, 12 are on site, six attend via Zoom, and seven are at home with curriculum materials. Last week, uh, we received $3,400 from the Academy Bullet Swim for pool use for the last three weeks. Our art, cultural arts dance program has brought in $10,325 in gross revenue. Under parks and facility maintenance, uh, water and filled, tree bags were filled throughout the district as it's been very dry until this week. Staff have been taking care of wasps and bee nests. Weeding has been going on. Uh, we had a complaint at Countryside Park. Staff have informed me that MWRD was called in. They removed a 52-inch stump from the creek. They also found the front end of an old car. 
in the creek area there, the park, so they've removed that. They'll be taking a fecon when they can find one that's available to cut down the area. They've also sprayed for poison ivy. Here at Hoosier Grove, they've uh, dressed up the parking lot islands by removing a lot of the old mulch and then top dressing with a fresh layer. Native perennials have been planted at the administrative building, Hoosier flagpole, wedding garden, and marquee signs that in the future will help reduce the cost of annuals. All trees two years and younger and some shrubs have been fertilized because of the dry summer. Improvements have already been noticed in the Japanese maples. Also, as we talked about before, we have completed the removal of the safety town buildings. Asphalt remains to be removed and then the area will be receded. Park signs are being repainted, starting with the worst ones at Southwick and Bartlett Parks. Brush cutting is underway with Shady Oaks being completed in Dalton Park in progress. Staff reported a large willow tree at Glenbrook Park was removed by a contractor. And then this morning we were informed that the transmission on the John Deere 1200A tractor went out. Uh, they're investigating other options besides repair. Under facilities, the new five horsepower air compressor has been installed and is in service. Staff have replaced all can lights at park places upper and lower lobbies with LEDs and also done the exterior lights in the back patio. Sun Deck will be out the week of 921 to do some floor repairs at Sunny Hill and Hoosier Grove. We're gonna ask them to look at something at Park Place as well. And last week, annual fire extinguisher inspections were completed. Under Commissioner's Park, we've uh, loaded and dropped all the bricks for engraving. And I have uh, the drone footage, sorry about the uh, typo in there. Drone footage is also being done. We have our weekly meetings. We also have waiting the village is they're reviewing foundation drawings that they're requiring for the bathroom building. Concrete's being poured and installed at the playground this week. Change orders under consideration, including a additional water line and hydrant by the football house. And lastly, staff is reviewing the list of plant materials for Commissioner's Park. The virtual fall program guide under marketing is out. It's on the website. And uh, paper copies are available at Park Place Recreation Center. A new communication and marketing request form has been created and is in place for staff. We've also been researching a new banner printer scanner that will allow us to digitize construction plans and drawings. It'll also allow printing of banners in-house at a savings over the current practices of sending materials out. And then lately, we've been uploading scores of photos and other information to Google Maps to improve interaction for people looking for our parks on Google. This slide here is just our analytics for uh, last week across the board for all of our social media. I won't take the time to explain it all, but it just explains where people have been clicking and looking. Financially, the auditor, I spoke to him last week, Joe Julius said he should have a draft in the near future with a board presentation in October. Due to COVID-19, an extension may be requested from the state without penalty. It just means that it gives a little more time to get everything taken care of. Furlough related payroll numbers, we're still $20,000 under normal gross wages. The latest payroll, slide down a little bit, please. On 9-11, gross wages were 63,000, or paid wages were 63,600. IMRF wages and taxes across the board there. Administratively, we applied for and have won an award from IAPD for our partnership with the Alliance for Collaborative Education for our Kitty Corner Park Summer Reading and Lunch Program. I'll have more information coming out on that. We're one of three agencies in the state to win the award. So congratulations to everybody on that. We'll also begin working on the 2020 tax levy. The CPI is reportedly at 2.3%. We're currently working on computer replacement and technology system enhancements. And we are still waiting to hear back on the status of all the grants that we have applied for. The last thing I wanna mention is that Joe Hernandez will be retiring on September 18th. That's 21 years of service. You're invited on Thursday, but please join me in thanking him for his dedicated service and exemplary. Mm -hmm. 
performance at the district. And that's a nice picture of Joe that we have. That completes my report. Do I have any comments or questions? Director Janda? Okay. Next up, we have commissioners reporting. Commissioners have anything to report? Yeah, I want to just say that I had a very uh, okay. I had a very pleasant conversation with uh, Director Jeff Janda. He's doing a wonderful job. He answered all my questions about the park district, about the parks and the buildings and and the bonds very satisfactorily. And in fact, I'm very happy that he's taking care of repairs and maintenance of the buildings besides just the parks. And as I said, he's doing a wonderful job. We're very happy you're with us, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, moving on to President's report real quick. Once again, I want to um, apologize last week haven't been at the barn and all the echoes and everything. I wasn't on my my best behavior and I was a little bit short. So I apologize to the team. It's just uh, it's very frustrating, but it, there, there's no excuse for that. So I just wanted to put that out there. So anyway, next up we have unfinished business. Does anybody have any unfinished business they wish to share? Seeing none, next up is new business. Um, First, we have the discussion and consideration of resolution 2020-09-01-R honoring Joe Hernandez on his retirement. I entertain a motion for approval of the uh, re Joe's her resolution. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion to say any discussion. Roll call vote, please. Uh, Commissioner Armstrong? Aye. <laughs> Commissioner Brogan? Ready for it. Aye. 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 Six times. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Janik? <laughs> Commissioner Yower? Aye. President Wright? Aye. The next up, as you know, we had our hearing last week. Um, so we were discussion and consideration ordinance 2020-9-01-0, an ordinance provided for the issue of not to exceed 1.5 million general obligation limited tax park bond series 2020 for the payment of land condemned or purchased for parks for the building, maintaining, improving, and protecting of the same and the existing land and facilities of the park district and for the payment of the expense, expense incident thereto providing for the levy of a direct annual tax to pay the principal interest on said bonds and authorizing the sale of said bonds to the purchaser thereof. I'd entertain a motion for approval of ordinance 20-1-0. Okay, so moved. And we have a second. Bill? Yes, sir. Just, just for, uh, Transparency, can, uh, can uh, we read the title of the ordinance again? Discussion concerning ordinance 2020-09-01-0, an ordinance provided for the issue of not to exceed 1.5 million general obligation limited tax park bonds, series 2020. Is, is that acceptable, Jeff, or do I, should I read the yes. whole thing? Okay. Yes. So we have a motion, do we have a second? I think Commissioner Janik seconded, if I heard correctly. Yeah, I think so. Roll call, please. Commissioner Armstrong? Aye. Commissioner Brogan? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Commissioner Janik? Aye. Commissioner Yower? Aye. <clears throat> President Wright? Aye. Okay, next up, I'd entertain approval. For, I mean, approval, I'd entertain a motion for adjournment. Sure. Sure. Got a oh. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Who, oh. who, who, who made the motion? Rich, Rich, Rich 
Rich said yes, and, and Ray seconded it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Everybody. And we all say. Have a great week. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Bye bye. 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 Safe. Hold on, please. Hold on. Okay.